and hello again and here we are on the hottest day of the year so far I think this is going to be vlog number three and it's a good day for it because it's absolutely roasting and I can just about hear behind that door over there in the Dana room a bike that sounds like the Trine Thuxton that we looked at last week so maybe we can see that today being run up on the dyno well, I don't think you can hear me over the sound of that Thruxton on the dyno so we'll just have a quick look round outside the bikes waiting for work before we move on and there's quite a nice BMW 1000 RR there just arrived and let's see what else we've got waiting for work and tucked away here in the corner in the sunshine is what looks like a pretty immaculate to be honest Honda CX500 and I'm told it's in for a little bit of work, make it an MLT, and then it's going to be for sale. So we're going to buy quite a mint looking Honda CX500 for about three grand, then call the shop up and I'm sure they'll put you in touch with the owner. Okay, so this is a 09 Ducati Hyper Strada, is it? Or Hyper, Hyper Motor, sorry. Looks pretty mint. And what's it in for, Tim? Having a full service, full service belts, belts, and it's having uh, HM quick shift. No, a Translogic. A Translogic quick shifter. And, uh, Ducati uh, is getting an ECU tune. ECU tune, which involves, I guess, and dyno work, I guess, a few hours on the dyno. Possibly, because it's come from Superbike factory at Macclesfield. Okay. Uh, it's leaking, the forks are leaking, so they'll probably want fork seals. Fork seals, well. yeah. yeah. And uh, in the background there, we see oh, yeah. the monster, sorry, not the monster, Diavel. Diavel. Yeah, and that's here for a, also for a tune. That's a quote, that's an ECU tune. ECU tune. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like it's got an aftermarket cans on it. Adjusting his belt because the, it was. Yeah, the rear drive belt. The, yeah, the, the rear drive belt is. Uh, in, garage, yeah, and yeah and it's very, very tight. They've not put a side panel on right and okay. that's fallen off. Okay. I mean, it's said with Harleys, a, a happy belt is a tight belt, but that is so tight it's going to yeah, destroy your wheel bearings or something anyway. And then at the end here, we've got what I think is a R1. R1, uh, is it a track day bike? Yeah. Yeah, because that rear tyre is uh, pretty. Yeah. Worn out, isn't it? That's having an ECU tune. ECU tune, and yeah. And it's having race tools fitted, so quick shifter and auto blipper. Yeah. Quick shifter, auto blipper. So when you say it's having an ECU tune, what's that actually involved? Sam's gonna have to stick it on the dyno, take it, and uh, does he do a one-off map on it? Completely customised map on it. Full custom map, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of alterations to different tables that involve yeah, yeah. throttle position, yeah. throttle position, yeah. um, ignition mapping, yeah. um, secondary butterflies, yeah. a lot of wizardry, and so then he actually then maps the fuel in. Yeah, so it's not a question of, oh, I'm just going to flash a new, I don't know, bit of data on it and it's it all going to be okay. Six hours. six hours of hard work, yeah. Okay, and over there, look, another Ducati. For people who don't think you do Ducatis, what you do. And so let's just go over there and see what's going That's on. Had, um, we okay. had to take the cylinder off. Okay. I think it was because the um, exhaust uh, mounting uh, bolts. bolts were sheared off. Okay, quite common, so yeah. Take yeah. the cylinder off. And, and get the bolts out. Yeah. Okay, quite common. And over in the corner, I also see a rather mint fire blade, an early fire blade. Yeah. So what's that one in for? Let's go look at that. Because the customer never rides it and the carburetors are now all gummed up. Right, today. yeah, yeah. So it's in for a car clean, car clean. service, an MOT. Yeah, it looks mint actually, doesn't it? I mean, this R6 here. That R6. guy's come all the way from London. Oh, right. Because he's got a flat spot on part of his rev range. Yeah. Uh, and he's been round the several businesses in London who haven't lived up to his expectations so right. he's, he's researched online found us yeah and he's adamant that he wants us to do it right okay. so on saturday he rode all the way all the way from london, london. Here, neck. Yeah. that's a long way to go yeah and next up we see a bike we saw briefly in episode i think vlog one because it was parked up tucked away at the back of the storage unit but we brought it out here so tim can tell us all about his project bike and i've been told it started out life as a honda C50, but now it's a Honda C110, which obviously has been tuned up a wee bit, and it might get a bit more work yet. So Tim's just going to come along now and dump all his high-tech bits and bobs. There. Well, not so much high-tech, but um, so what have we got, Tim? It's got a C50. Well, it used to be. Yeah. Now I think it's 
still haven't really had a good look at it since I bought, since we got it. So All right. It's a, a Live Fan 110 engine. Okay, which is what Chinese is it? Yeah, Chinese. But it's a copy of a Honda, isn't it? At the end of the day. Yeah. So what on earth made you buy that? Because that exhaust pipe looks really weird. I like it. Yeah, it's a stainless steel one. So this. The, this is apparently kept speed racing exhaust. Okay, looks like a drain pipe to me. We've got this one that we're going to try on as well. Yeah, that might work a bit better, I think. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, and then looking down here, I see you got some handlebars. Got some decent handlebars because it's shot shit handlebars. Yeah. On. Some got grips. A, um, a rental clutch oh, right. unit for it. Upgrade, yeah. A quick action throttle. Okay. And some risers. Okay. Lamps. Yeah. Pro grip, yeah. grips, and these nice red, red anodized rental, rental bars. bars. Okay, so what on earth made you buy that in, in the first place? Why did you buy this weird bike? You've already got like two or three. It. They look good. Yeah. And um, I just thought it'd be a bit of fun. So like a little shop bike to whiz round on. Yeah. Got it cheaply on. Town bike. Yeah, yeah, a little town bike. Yeah. So have you actually ridden it yet? Is it road legal? Um, it is road legal because it's over 40 years old, oh, so right. it doesn't need any road tax or any insurance. Oh, right. that's handy. Uh, not, in, yeah, not insurance. Any, um, MOT. Road tax or MOT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what year is it then? 1972, I think. 1972, bloody hell. Hence it's allowed to have the, uh, the black, black plate. Yeah. Black yeah. plate, yeah. Okay. So when do you think this thing will be all done then? When you get time, no doubt, because you've got no time right now, have you? It's just... This time of year, you're so soon, busy, isn't it? Because yeah. I want to ride it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so, it's uh, there for when I get the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great stuff. Let's move on and see what else is happening this week then. Okay, so here's the dyno graph of the thruxton, just finished, and I take it the blue line is... Yeah, the blue line's the before and after, this is the modern triumph thruxton R. Bit of a big lazy lump, so obviously less power than you'd imagine for a 1200cc bike, but a really nice smooth delivery. Yeah, very uh, It's quite yeah. interesting because a lot of the bikes with well designed catalytic converters don't necessarily gain throughout the rev range, but you can really see here the characteristic of allowing the, air, the engine to breathe better. Yeah. We've got a BMC air filter in it, uh, the k isn't available as yet, but it's a very similar product to BMC. Huge power gain at the top end, nice torque gain all the way through as well. Not a lot of difference at the bottom on the graph, but in reality it's a lot smoother than it was before with the work in the ignition tables. The Power Commander 5 we've mapped to here does have ignition capability, as it does on a lot of the modern twins. Okay, so I can't quite see from here, but what is the numbers? I can't read it from here. Uh, I think we're looking at 87 horsepower peak originally yeah. and 95 horsepower five, peak now. Yeah, yeah. And the torque's also up. Yeah, okay, yeah so we've got the five foot pound gain. Yeah. Which doesn't sound like a lot really, does it? You know, but it's just over five percent, but it's a, a strong gain all the way through yeah, yeah, from yeah, three thousand yeah. RPM right through to the limit's probably about seven and a half thousand. I suspect it'll feel a lot better too. Feel a lot better. Off, off throttle. Loads better. And the the incremental throttle, the transition from off to on, much, much smoother yeah, there as well. With the work in the ignition tables there, having a few of them cock on really helps. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great stuff. Just shows what went worthwhile 
sticking your bike on a dyno and get it just right once you've modified it with pipes and whatnot. It certainly does, it's nice to have the best out of the bike and as yeah. you can see certainly this yeah. guy wasn't having the best out of the bike at no. all. No, no, no. Uh, you know, I think these bikes aren't all about the peak power but the, the torque gain is throughout. So the graph here we're seeing of course only on 100% throttle but if you look at the 2%, 5% you're seeing similar gains, it's going to yeah. feel much more lively. Yeah. And it's got a nice note with the decap and the air filter as well. It's yeah. got a, a more traditional note. Yeah, it's a bit it's strangled uh, before. Yeah, it certainly sounds quite loud from outside. Okay, great stuff. Thanks for that, Sam. No problem. I'll let you go now and we can go and drink some more tea. Okay.